For over 132 years, the Coca-Cola company has been part of many people's lives. Coca-Cola now offers more than 500 brands in over 200 countries worldwide. The Coca-Cola company also employs over 700,000 people, creating economic opportunities in many local communities. The company has also taken the responsibility upon themselves to reduce the environmental impact by replenishing water and promoting recycling. Now you may ask yourself, what is the secret to the Coca-Cola brand success? Well, it's the people. The people who have collectively created and benefited from these various initiatives across the African continent. I'm Asanda Marku and I'll be your guide through these various initiatives that the Coca-Cola company has set up. So join me as we embark on the journey to find the secret formula. The world is going through a packaging problem and as the biggest beverage company, Coca-Cola has taken the initiative to help solve this problem by making all their packaging recyclable by 2025 and using 50% of recycled material in their cans and bottles by 2030. And as they work toward a world without waste, they aim to collect and recycle a bottle or can, regardless of where it comes from, for every one they sell by 2030. Whew, sorry, I need to catch my breath because it's been a while since we've been outside, which feels so good because we've been cooped up, you know, during lockdown. And now that the cases are lowering and decreasing, it feels so good to be shooting again and being out in nature and enjoying the sunlight and traveling hopefully very soon. We'll be on the road, whether it's Kenya, Uganda, I am ready, child. I've been cooped up and locked down for too long. And you can tell, you know, that's why I'm wearing this tent of a dress. <laughs> I won't lie, I miss the window seat and I'm not talking about this seat, I'm talking about the aeroplane seat. But you know what, I'm still grateful to be back on the road, even though it's not a plane. Um, we're on our way to CCBA to talk to TD. You know, with everything that's happening, I'm just grateful to be working again. Now, unfortunately, we're still under lockdown because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and that's why the borders are also closed. But you know what? Business needs to still carry on. And that's why I'm at CCBA to meet with Tiri Ramohase, who is the Public Affairs and Communications Director. She's going to fill us in more about bottling, recycling, reusing, and the World Without Waste project. Well, I'm glad you could get dressed for us, you know, and put on some makeup. You look gorgeous, Thank as opposed you. to, you know, doing meetings with business at the top and you know? <laughs> pajamas at the bottom. <laughs> Guilty as trash. In terms of CCBA's uh, vision, you know, can you just take us through that and how you're operating sustainably? So, uh, as a business, as a bottling company, um, a franchise Coca-Cola bottler, our vision is to refresh Africa every day and make uh, the continent a better place for all. Um, what that means for us is, is that Africa is our home. We've been here for over 70 years. We operate in 13 countries currently, and we truly believe that we, we thrive when our communities thrive. Um, for us, doing business the right way, not just the easy way, is important. And how does that link up with you know, Coca-Cola's uh, World Without Waste project? So in 2018, Coca-Cola announced our World Without Waste vision, um, 2030 World Without Waste vision. For us as a bottler, what it means is that this is really where the rubber hits the road. You know, um, we bring Coca-Cola's vision to life. We make sure that it is not just an empty statement, but we leave it and we are able to report accordingly in terms of the progress we make. So if, if you look at it, um, you know, it's got three key elements. The first one being design, everything around, if we are going to use a package, and this is across all our, you know, be uh, beverage packaging, let's think about where will it end? It's not just about buying it today and that it, you know, it's, it's consumer friendly and convenient, but it's also okay after the consumer has used the packaging, what happens to it? So the entire full life cycle of the bottle, we need to take that into consideration, which is why you see the second element of it as collect and recycle. 
know. So first you design it, you, you are mindful of the packaging you're choosing and you, you have multiple you know, packaging um, options in there. So from cans to glass to PT bottle and it includes our secondary packaging. So it's not just about you know, your primary, but it's going to be about everything in the long run. The second element says, okay, now how do you mobilize community stakeholders, like-minded business to collect and recycle this package? We know that most of our packaging is highly recyclable today. Um, it's just unfortunate that most people don't know. So it's really this is our effort to make sure that they understand that if they consume their product and dispose of, of the packaging you know, responsibly, at the end, we are able to collect it and recycle it. So the consumer role is critical, you know, to, that the consumer understands that it starts with them. Once we are able to collect it, working with collecting partners, your aggregators, it's important then to work with recyclers to say, can you create something out of this? Because, you know, we, with, in PET, we like to say PET is not trash, you know, plastic bottles are not trash. So the, the idea is to create life for that bottle, either as a bottle again or as another end use. You know, PET is such a versatile material, you know, and when you do that, in the, by the way, you're creating social impact because people that collect and sell PT and the companies that set up recycling businesses, they employ people along the way. You have to mobilize people, you have to work with like-minded uh, industries, you have to work with government. You know, government creates an environment that allows us to do all this work. So the partnership element, which is a third element, is quite critical for us. Um, and yeah, so in, in, in so doing, every time we're looking at our packaging, we're looking at opportunities, we're looking at efforts, we look in those three buckets. Getting some money back for returning bottles, just even for the consumer making money, you know, not necessarily through the companies. How, 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 was, how did that come, you know, uh, to play? So it, it is about doing business the right way, as I said. So mm -hmm. if you think about it, in South Africa, we always had a returnable glass, yes. you know, 1.25, okay? Yes. So it's a similar concept, okay. but with PET, plastic. Um, and really, the, the, the nine rand deposit you're talking about is to motivate the consumer to bring it back. If it's one rand, yeah. ah, what can I do with one, one rand? rand? But if it's nine rand, you motivate them to bring it back. Mm. And it's important that it comes back because remember we built behind that bottle coming back, we've built an entire logistic capacity. So it's important that when a truck goes to a shop and deliver bottles that are full of coke they can come back with the ones that are empty, empty. because then you know you're not just driving back mm -hmm. an empty truck with no bottles with a machine that's waiting to refill those oh, bottles yes, you know yes. so it was important that we incentivize the the, the the consumer but at the same time it was important that we look at a packaging that can be refillable mm -hmm. you know because remember we still have the two liter that is one way but now we've got this refillable so it was important that we, we, we start to test that concept. We again we did a benchmark trip. We learned from mainly South America in the way that they did it, and we said let's pilot it. We did it in the Eastern Cape. It worked. So now we're rolling it out. You know. So so that is part of what other things can we do? What is working well in other markets? Why can it not work here? Let's give it a shot. And. The response is obviously what makes us keep wanting to do more and do the right things. CCBSA is rolling out new 2-litre returnable PET bottles, offering consumers value for money while including them as an important part of the recycling value chain. Through a deposit return system, the returnable PET bottles can be reused until the end of their life cycle. Next, we're popping into the home of David Drew, Head of Sustainability, Southern and East Africa Business Unit at the Coca-Cola Company. From a progress perspective, the world without waste is obviously extremely new. We've, we've done our first year of full reporting uh, on the 2019 results and there's already a, a visible improvement in what we've done but clearly with 10 years to go essentially we've got a long way to go. Um, in South Africa we've, we've actually been involved in this kind of initiative for a long time in particular on PET which is our plastic bottles and we've been part of what's called Petco, uh, the plastic bottle recycling company which has been in place for started in 2004 
and has increased the recycling of PET bottles from around about 14% when we started to a peak of about 68% and last year unfortunately a slight drop to 62%. But still in terms of global numbers that's an extremely good number especially for, for a developing country. Returnable PET is a, is a new project for some of our Coke system. Returnable PET has been used in the Western Cape as many people will know for, for a long time. Um, but what is new is the launch of a 2 litre bottle um, we ran a trial in the Eastern Cape towards the end of last year and we've recently launched it in Northern Gauteng and we will launch it in the Popo as well uh, now. The, the point of returnable PET is to give consumers um, an alternative to one-way bottles. As part of the process of launching this product we've had to put a lot of effort into, into awareness to make people aware of the bottle but what we've also done is the bottle has a nine rand deposit which is a considerable incentive for people to bring the bottle back and remember that we want the bottle back we want people to return the bottle and that's why we've sort of made sure that there's enough incentive for people to do it so the sprite transition from green to clear is something that's that's really important Green PET is recyclable and it can be recycled into a number of uses. The difficulty is, is that it can be recycled into fewer things than clear PET. Now clear PET and light blue are used for bottle to bottle recycling. So in other words, bottles that you and I use and are recycled get turned back into material that goes back into bottles. That process is fairly rigorous, but it needs clear material and it can use a bit of blue material. Unfortunately, it can't use green and so whilst our Sprite bottles were recyclable, they couldn't be recycled back into bottles that we could use. Ah, I see they've got the new packaging. Now, as you can see, Sprite has changed their packaging from the green bottle to the clear one, simply because it's more recyclable. But I wonder if they faced any challenges when it comes to branding. And that's why I spoke to Tabiso Mabitela, because this is such an iconic brand, just to find out more and how they're addressing this problem. So we've got a world without waste vision, right? So we really want to collect all the bottles we put out into the market, uh, but also get, you know, by 2030, have 50% recyclable content in that pack. Uh, we've already started that journey with the likes of Bonacqua. Uh, their 500 mil uh, pack is already 100% uh, recycled material. But there's also a link to the brand itself being about transparency and clarity and now a bottle is exactly a representation of that. So it all fits together. Look, I think from a brand recognition point of view, we've definitely worked hard around the pack and the pack design from a labeling uh, perspective. But this change is also happening on our cans as well. So there's going to be a whole new look and we've worked hard on that differentiation. We have listened to the consumer who have said, look, we've been having a bit of difficulty. So that's the one thing. From a business point of view, that's not the objective. The objective is about sustainability and doing things the right way that are going to ensure that we leave this planet a better place than we found it, right? The byproduct of that may be, say, you know, the value of PET or plastic going up for waste pickers. So you see that if you do the right thing, if you stay the course and really follow the vision, for sustainability, the byproduct of doing the right thing is new jobs for people, is the opportunity for uh, plastic value to go up and recycling capacity to go up. That's just a byproduct, but not the, it's not the finance is not the uh, main goal for this. Yeah. You know, if you're a Sprite person, you kind of like the little bit of the rebel, you know, uh, outspoken, you know, quite transparent and clear about who you are and uh, very, very close to urban culture and street culture, which I'm a big fan of, you know, everything from music to, you know, the clothing, the whole thing, is, it's me. The one positive that has arised from the coronavirus outbreak is the fact that we're interviewing so many people at their homes. The atmosphere is always chilled and laid back. As far as moving to clear uh, plastic, some people haven't noticed that we've actually done it on a couple of other brands as well. It's just that the liquid is, the, is in a different color. That's why it's not as overt. And I think with Sprite moving to clear, from green to clear, is a real big deal. But it's something that we, we intend to roll out in 2020 in South Africa, but also extend to the rest of Africa because the world without waste vision extends beyond the borders of this country, but it's something that we're doing across the globe. Now, on that note of the world without waste vision, we travel to Extra Pets in Germiston. They are the largest and most advanced recycler of PET bottle materials on the African continent. They specialize in reclaiming and converting waste PET bottles into various grades of PET chips and flakes. 
This is then converted into fiber, thermoforming, food grade and strapping grade material to produce high quality and reliable end products for use in packaging and other applications. I'm here at Extra Pets to talk to Shandru and Vinoid about the next phase when it comes to recycling. So recycling is symptomatic of how we clean up at home. We all want to live in a clean environment. Uh, so as we would clean up at home, uh, recycling is a key function of keeping a clean environment. And can you tell us, um, you know, how uh, important is plastic, you know, as a material in this industry, as opposed to other materials like aluminium and, you know, paper? Why plastic? Very pertinent question. We're hearing a lot about these alternatives to get us away from plastics. But I think people forget that we're soon to be a global population of 8 billion people on this planet. And the reality is when you're wanting to transport food, water, liquids, uh, other products to that quantum of people, plastics comes with the lowest carbon footprint. And the danger is, is that if we don't recognize that and move to the alternatives, we'll actually do more harm to the environment than good. And what are your hopes, you know, for the future of recycling? So the first hope is to grow the awareness with the public in terms of the realization that it's a valuable product that has an end of life use. It is a circular product. Um, the other hope is to encourage more brand owners to be more mindful about design. So we are very excited about Coca-Cola's new move on the Sprite bottle because really the recyclability of any product starts with how it was designed. So by transitioning from a green to a clear, Coca-Cola in one sweep solved two of our challenges. Now, these are the green bottles Chandra was talking about, the green Sprite bottles that thankfully have been changed or are being changed into clear bottles. The reason being is because the green bottles just basically sit here until they need it. Yes, they're recyclable, but not as much as the clear bottles which go right back into the market. So to summarize the process, we receive bottles in a bale form that have already been collected elsewhere primarily sorted, um, but not 100% sorted. So when it comes here, we open up the bales, loosen up the bottles, and it goes through a sorting process to differentiate the different types of plastics, the different types of colors. Once we've done that, we grind up the bottles into flakes. They look like corn flakes, they're a similar size. We then wash it to remove the glue residue, and then we take it through a melt process to filter any contamination that might be in there. There's an additional process when you want to make it food grade, which is a decontamination process in a cylinder that's uh, treated under heat and vacuum. And that then decontaminates, if there were any contamination particles in there, on a food safety criteria. So that's a rough summary of what we do. Right, now as you can see we had to take our masks off because with all the noise happening and the mask you won't be able to hear me. Um, but we've maintained our social distancing between myself and Vinoid, thank you so much. He's going to take us through this whole process of the recycling right here at Extra Pets. So uh, we get the bottles from dump site or curbside collections. It comes in the bale form. These are post-consumer bottles, uh, unsorted bottles. And uh, this will come and uh, first come on our way bridge so that we get the gross waste and then it, the bottles will go to the offloading area. Now Vino, can you tell us what is going on here? So uh, this is an offloading area yeah. where we have seen that the bottles are okay and now the forklift driver will remove the bales from the truck and uh, the bottles will be stored here. You can see the, this is the storage area. Woo! I'm constantly looking over my shoulders uh, because there's like 140 things happening around me, recycling, things being dropped off, hard hats, safety is of importance here. Forget COVID, I am constantly on the lookout. I mean, I'm not dressed the part, trust, but you know what? Safety is always on point. See that uh, the sand and mud is coming out there. Yes, wow, that's amazing. So it separates it from the plastic and the can. If we are bringing, say, 100, kg of bottle. Out of that 20, 20, 22, 23 kg still has to go back to the dump site because there are some labels, sand, mud. What is happening here is the bottles are coming into this uh, uh, tumble 
where it is washed with the caustic and then it goes on to that uh, vibrating uh, uh, table where all the labels comes out so you saw the flakes which is grinded from the grinder it was very dirty was having labels and other things so after the entire process the wash flakes looks like this now these are these flakes are externally clean now this surface is very clean but still it is okay to, for fiber only to make it food grade this has to go into food grade plant and all the volatile contaminations has to be removed from this to make it food grade Oh, Vinod, I can actually hear myself think. Yeah. I don't know how you guys do it, but you know, it's much, the difference is crazy. So, um, what exactly is happening here? So, here we do the flakes testing. The flakes which are produced, which you have just seen. Yes. We test it here whether it's okay to go for food grade or not. Well, it's very interesting, I must say. It's a lot of work, a lot of work goes into it. Um, yeah, I think I'll stick to my day job. I'm good. <laughs> so, it's about 3 million bottles processed every day. Three so, million. Yes, and you've seen the process of processing yes. three million bottles from feeding up till the flakes production. Yes, no, you know, I'll actually appreciate laundry day from now on. <laughs> like, this is on another level. I mean, we've been walking. <laughs> uh, good thing I'm wearing flats. But how big is this place? Because it seems massive so, from where uh, we started. So, the total area which, uh, which you've seen so far mm -hmm. is close to 40,000 square meters. Wow. Okay, that's huge. So how was business uh, with the whole shift and change that everyone had to go through? So there, there was a lot of change. Uh, thankfully, I think the government directors were very clear, uh, very easy to follow. I think for us, what was probably less challenging is working in an environment like this. Health and safety is utmost in the way we operate our businesses. So in terms of incorporating a lot of those COVID measures, it actually came very easy to us. Right, Benoit, my mom would be very proud, you know. I feel like a, a, a scientist right now. <laughs> so we all decked out, protocol observed, we took off our watches now. Yes, Where you, are, you are all set to go into food. I am. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this area is access controlled. You can see that you can't go out unless uh, you use the biometric. Okay. So that is a requirement again from highest uh, food safety standards. When we go inside, uh, before you enter into this, we all have to wash our hands with the soap. Anyway, washing hands now become very important because yes, of COVID also. With the COVID uh, happening. But okay. this is a main requirement. Uh, as so a before requirement. COVID, this is what you do. What the? Okay. It smells clean in here. Very sanitized. I'm sure the germs on me are so clean. <laughs> but it's, it's, yeah, impressive. You have seen the washed dried flakes in the first process. Now the washed and dried flakes are kept in these silos. These are the buffer silos. And then from here it goes to the dryer. Oh, I can feel the heat. Yeah, because it's, it is, although it is insulated. Yeah. But inside temperature is 280 degrees. 280 degrees. You'll see on the panel. Degrees. Yeah. Wow. You see. Wow. The entire process is a closed process. You can't see the flakes now. It is already melted. And it is now converted into small pellets. The final chips are bagged in this. You've seen that, you have not seen the flakes. You can see only the chips. The chips are here. Inside is the finished product. Wow, wow, so it comes all the way down. Yeah, so after passing through entire process, this is the final bagging. And uh, this is the finished product. From here, the quality control will take the sample and they will take to the laboratory. To test them. To test it. Mm, okay, so I'm with Bukele Nube and he's gonna take me through the whole testing process, right? So, yeah, do your thing. Okay, firstly, we take um, one gram of a sample, of the sample, we put okay. it into this tube. Okay. After, after putting it into this tube, we do what you call, we transfer the impurities, mm -hmm. gaseously with the aid of nitrogen, to this tube over here. 
it will be trapped in a carbon tube. Okay. It will be here for 10 minutes. Okay. After that, we take this tube, after it's done with this process, then we put it into, into that machine over there. Then it comes here, and we put it. Then we come here, we set up a sequence. Uh, it will be more like this, mm -hmm. where we insert the tube, the sample type, the name, the method of testing, then it will, we will run the sequence. Nashandu, can you just tell us how has COVID-19 and this lockdown affected you personally? Me personally, I must be honest, I, I tend to feel more lucky than I don't and really driven then to see how can we help the greater collective. Because even though we directly employ close to 500 people, as has been spoken about through institutions like Petco, the indirect job creation from projects like this runs into the thousands. And we saw how difficult it was for them during lockdown, and still is. So every bottle that we can take in is going to have a value down the value chain, down to the waste picker. So that's our drive, and I think from that we draw positives, and me personally as well. In South Africa, we're very excited to announce a COVID-specific intervention for the recycling value chain. We are putting extra funds into Petco. We are putting extra funds into buyback centers and collection centers, uh, specifically to help fund their cash flow, because we know that if they don't buy, if, they're not, if they don't have the money to buy the raw materials or they don't, they don't have the money to buy the collected materials, then they, the, the collectors will stop earning any money and the collection will literally stop. As a company, we believe in extended producer responsibility, which essentially says you produce the product, you take extended responsibility to make sure that it's recycled or it's collected from the environment and managed in an environmentally responsible way. Um, and as, as the Coca-Cola system um, where we operate, we really advocate for this. And what it, what it means is that you want to work with an, um, like minded companies um, in, in like an industry body, you know, we normally call them product responsibility organization, PRO, which is it's a, it's a way that helps you achieve your extended producer responsibility. Um, and the idea here is that, you know, you come together, you've got common purpose, you pay towards collecting this, you know, it's, it's not free. And that's where the extension of your responsibility comes from. What is Coca-Cola doing, you know, in terms of just teaching and educating young entrepreneurs, um, you know, about recycling? One of our partners, Coca-Cola Beverages South Africa, uh, they have a school uh, program, a school education program. Uh, in 2018, for instance, um, almost 900 schools participated. Uh, where there's a lot of training, actual uh, uh, programs that, that uh, teach them about recycling, how to do it at home. Uh, so we believe uh, that education is actually the way to change this uh, behavior going forward. Pollution is kind of a representation of how we've been treating each other, where a person just does what they do and they keep moving as long as it doesn't affect me. But now, I mean, we Africans, we know about Ubuntu, and you gotta look after your next person or the next child that's coming up that may not get a chance to be in this environment that we have. So recycling is a step in ensuring the future for your kids. I've got a son, I want him to go to the beach one day and I know what it means when there's pollution in the ocean. So if I don't do my part, you know, what, what happens to him? With COVID-19 still upon us, and even though the numbers are decreasing, it's great to see that Coca-Cola is still pushing full steam ahead with the World Without Waste project and goals, creating more jobs and opportunities for the communities. I'm Asanda Marco, and trust me, I'll be joining the recycling movement. So join me next time on The Secret Formula.